I bring you greetings from uh, Tachipi Church, uh, Brother Mark and Sister Sylvia. Um, I told them I was coming here just on Friday. I said, oh, that they'll, they'll be happy to have you here. <laughs> and so he said, give them our greetings. And so I want to share um, that greetings with you. And I want to thank uh, you for having us here and uh, the pastor for giving me the privilege to share with you. It's always a pleasure to do that. Um, we are going to be um, talking about, I believe, something that may have been in your heart and may have been some questions that you, you know, trying to ask, but you can't ask. <laughs> um, we want to talk about stirring up the gifts that is in you. Stirring up the gift that is in you. Amen. Uh, in addition to that passage that was read for us, I want to read this passage now. Please listen, and we'll try and discuss it as much as we can. First Corinthians chapter 12. First Corinthians chapter 12. I'm going to read from verse 1 to verse 11. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Ye know that ye were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols, even as ye were led. Wherefore, I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God call it Jesus a cost, and that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord, but by the Holy, uh, Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. Right. And there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. Yeah. And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. Mm -hmm. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. Mm -hmm. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same spirit. To another, the gifts of healing by the same spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, descending of spirits. To another, diverse kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretations of tongues. But all this worked that one and self-same self spirit dividing to every man severally as he wills. Yeah, that's right. okay. I'm not here to talk about those different gifts of the Spirit, but I'm here to talk about stirring yeah. whatever gift God has given to you. God bless you. You know, because I really do believe that every child of God, you know, is given a gift. I, I strongly believe that. Um, you know, we may not uh, preach that often here in this church, but it is good that you know that every child of God is given gifts. I, if, if, if you don't get any other thing from my preaching this morning, I want you to get that, yeah. that you have a gift, Amen. That's right. that I have a gift. Yeah. Stare up that gift. Yes. Amen. That's the summary of my preaching. <laughs> Stare up that gift. Bless you, Whatever gift it is that God has given to you. Amen. And I'm sure that the Lord is going to bless you and help you to use it. That's right. um, 
Second Timothy chapter one, verse six. I just want to read verse six alone. Wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gifts of God which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. Paul was talking to Timothy and he was telling him that he stirs up that gift. Before then he talked about his family, you know, the mother, the grandmother and all of that, the faith, you know, that was in them. And that was also in him. Amen. And he said, stir up that gift that is in you. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you read towards the end, it says, which is, which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. It does not mean that it was when uh, Paul put, on his hands, uh, put his hands on, on Timothy, he got the gift. No. It means that he had the gift and he was blessed. Just like, you know, in Portland, they bless our ministers or our pastors, people who are coming to, yeah. you know, take up uh, the work, yeah. whatever work that God is giving them. They put their hands on them and, and bless them and pray. That is commissioning them to God what God has put in them. But God has put that already in them. Yeah. And that is why, you know, um, Paul encouraged him that he should stir up that gift that is it's in him. I want to start first by saying that the most important gift that God has given to each and every one of us who are saved is the salvation of our soul. Is is that not wonderful? It's the greatest gift that you can have. Thank God for that. I mean, without that, we wouldn't be sitting here. You know, without that, we can't even do anything for God. But thank God for that great gift that came through Jesus Christ, through his sacrifice on the cross. You know, um, I do believe that each of us here have received that gift. If you have not, you have to seek for it. And it comes simply by honestly admitting your sins. Just be honest. It's It's not anything that you do that will bring that to you. It's just by being honest to God. I think that is one of the greatest things that we can have as Christians, that we are honest to God. Be honest with yourself and with God. Tell God, this is how I am. You see me. You know me. This is me. Just tell him Amen. and ask him to forgive you. Yes. And believe in that work that was done on the cross. Yeah. You know, that blood was shed for you. Amen. It was shed for the remission of our sins, yeah. for the forgiveness of our sins. Amen. And when we come to go to him and say, God, please have mercy on me. I've failed, I've tried, I've failed, I've, you know, I want to live for you, I want to serve you, yeah. but Lord, help me to be able to do that. Amen. And as you confess those sins to God, God forgives you, mm-hmm. and God gives you the grace to be a child of God, Amen. a son and a daughter yeah. of God, mm-hmm. you know, and that's the greatest gift that we can have. Right. It's only after you have received that great gift of salvation, then you'll be able to use what other gifts that God has given to you. Thank God also for the experience of sanctification. Those are things that God has given to us to be able to even use whatever gift that is given to us, not to talk of the baptism of the Holy Ghost. God gives us that. It's called power for service. It's not just service to come and stand here and preach. Not everybody is going to be, stand to, to be here to preach, but everybody will be able to do what God has called him or her to do. Whatever gift that he has given you. And I think that this is, you know, um, something that we need to know and believe in our heart, in our minds. Because if not so, we will just, you know, we can be discouraged, especially there are some of us here who have been here for a long time and maybe you're not doing one thing or the other that other people can see. (laughs) But I tell you, God has something for you. God has put something in you that you can do and you can be a blessing. Amen. You'll be a blessing to many. Right. Um, I just pray that God will help you to realize how important yeah. it is that you are there, that you are here, you know, in this church, for example, in this organization. I pray you help, that God will help you to understand it, that you are important. Yes. Amen. You are important. Right. 
God is not, has not just put you here for nothing. Right. God did not save you for nothing. That's right. you know? And certainly since all of us are not going to be preachers, all of us are not going to be Sunday school teachers, then why am I here? There's something that God has put in you. You have to pray and ask God to help you to know what that is. That's right. And God will help you. And as Paul was you know, encouraging um, Timothy, stir up that gift. Yeah. Stir it up. Amen. You know? Don't despise it. Mm-hmm. Don't think it's... <laughs> Yeah, the, 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 the portion that I read in, you know, uh, portion that I just read here uh, in Ephesians just tells you, sorry, in First Corinthians chapter 12, just it tries to explain to us that we, we, everyone is not going to be the hand, everyone is not going to be the head, everyone is not going to be the feet, you know? And you, you cannot say, oh, okay, because I, I'm the hand, I don't need the feet, I don't need the head, and all of that. It's, it can't work. Right. We are the body of Christ. We are the body. Amen. Each part is very important. Right. Even the part that you think is not important is so important. Right. When you think about the people that clean you know, the, the restroom for us, mm-hmm. you think they're not important. Right. I'm telling you, they are the most important people here in this group. You don't understand because it's not only just talking, staying here and talking, but doing what God God has asked you. There are people who have the gift of, you know, just encouraging people. Mm -hmm. Stir it up. There are people who have the gift of, you know, know, being able to give. Stir it up. There are people who have the gift of, you know, just, you know, visiting writing letters, calling, and it's so, so many things. The portion that we have read cannot even tell you everything, but there's a lot of things that God yeah. has called us, Amen. and he wants us to stir it up. Yeah. And I'm sure that as we do it, uh, we will definitely be, be blessed. Amen. I want to differentiate the, these different or specific gifts from the experiences that we've had. I've talked about that. The most important thing is the gift of salvation, of course, the sanctification. Then you have the baptism of the Holy Ghost. These are all necessary, and these are all what helps us to be able to use those gifts that he has uh, given to us. The Bible clearly tells us that uh, the gifts, that he gives gifts to every child of God. The Bible says so, that he gives gifts to every child of God. You know, And there are reasons for these gifts. We read it there, it's for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body, and so on. Right. That's why God has given us these gifts, Amen. so that we can uh, be used of God, yes. and we can be blessed of him. Uh, as you can imagine, verse 11, uh, verse 11 of that Ephesians 4, let's go back to it. Okay, verse 11 of that Ephesians 4 says, And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers and so on. The rest of the verses says what I just said, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the defying of the body and all of that. You see, um, I want to emphasize that God has a gift for everybody. God has a gift for me. God has a gift for you, and you have to recognize it. You know, as you can imagine, that verse 11 does not give a full catalog of the different gifts. It's impossible for that catalog of the different gifts to be here. But God has something for me, God has something for you, and God is going to help us to use this gift to save him, save him acceptably, Amen. save him in a way that will bring blessings not only to you, but to the group that you are and to the outside world. Amen. Glory be to God. Yes. So take note of this and know that God is wanting you to stir it up so that you can use it, so that it can be effective. In some places in the scripture, the, these gifts are also referred to as talents. You know? So you will see it used in different ways. It's therefore your place and my place to find out what that gift is, what that talent is, and ask God to help you to fulfill that. 
Uh, in 2 Timothy chapter 1, let's look at that, 2 Timothy chapter 1. Okay, in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 6, it says, Wherefore I put wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God which is in you. In that Timothy, second Timothy chapter one, verse six indicates that Timothy was given these gifts. It's not by the laying on of hands, as I said earlier but by the Spirit of God. Amen. God gives us severally according to um, uh, what the grace that he has given to us. Right. That laying of hands, as I said earlier, is just prayer, maybe prayer of ordination or commissioning. And that's what that was. Okay, so this need not be the same for everybody. The gifts, that's not it's going to be the same for everybody. And even the laying of hands and the commissioning it's not going to be for everybody. It's not everyone that is going to be commissioned to be, you know, to uh, be someone that uh, gives, gives, or someone that encourages, or someone that, you know, sends letters and all of that. They're not going to come here and then pray over you and anoint you for that. You know, of course, of course, we will anoint uh, pastors, we will anoint ministers, but God has given you a gift. Recognize what it is. Amen. And the Holy Spirit is going to witness in your spirit that this is the gift he has given to you, and he will help you to Amen. use it. Amen. But again, you have to stir it up. Mm -hmm. Again, notice that uh, this gift was not the unfeign of pure faith, mm -hmm. which is, you know, in, which you get through salvation, which uh, Timothy was given, and which the mother had and um, the grandmother had. It's not, not talking about that salvation which they all had, but this special gift. The gift is specific to uh, um, Timothy, and it's also going to be specific to you, whatever it is. So my question to you this morning is, if you have been saved and have identified that gift before now, are you using it? Or oh, let me go back a step, just a step before then. If you have been saved, have you recognized the gift that God has God you. given you? you, you know? yeah. Have you recognized it? Mm -hmm. If you have not been, I mean, if you have been saved and you have not recognized it, are you using that gift that God has given God to you? you? Okay. Uh, if not, today, uh, make it your prayer. Yeah. If you have really not identified that gift, make it your prayer. Amen. God what gifts do you want, do you have for me God bless you. that I might yeah. save you? Amen. He's given you that gift already, but God revealed it to me. Yeah. God, make me know it Amen. and make me, you know, rejoice in it yeah. and, and, be, and, and be happy and, and use it. Um, the the, the um, morning devotion that we had in, in the house before we came today, there was something that just struck me, and that is that we are not in competition. We are not in competition. Don't say that I am not the pastor, or I am not the assistant pastor, I am not the choir master, and all of that, and so I have nothing really to do for God. No, no, no. God has something for you. God has something for you. Ask God to help you to know it, you know, and be prepared to do it. And another thing God put in my mind today concerning this is that, especially the younger ones, don't think that, don't think that this is your father's church or your sister's church and all of that. Take ownership of it. It is your own. Yes. The gospel is yours. Yes. Take ownership of it. Mm -hmm. This is so important because sooner or later you're going to go, you're going to be on your own, you're going to get work and whatever. And if you say, oh, that was my pastor or my father's church or my, and so on, then you don't take ownership of it. You'll find that you'll be pushed here and there by every wing of doctrine, you know? But if you take ownership of the gospel, yeah. 
take ownership of the gift he's given to you, you are going to be happy. You're going to be a happy camper, as they say. And you're going to be able to serve God acceptably, and you will rejoice in it. So, if you have, been, if you have not been saved, first and foremost, this morning, ask God to save your soul. Ask God to forgive you. It's very simple, as I said, just be honest. When you come to you, when you come to him in this altar of prayer, say, God, please have mercy on me. God, forgive my sins. And mean it. When you tell God that, mean it. And God will forgive you. And he'll enable you to go and sin no more. It's not by our power. It's not by our strength. He says, it's by his spirit. After that, you can then ask God to, you know, let you know what gift or what talent he's given to you. And once we've identified our gifts, Paul is admonishing you, just as he admonished, Tim- as he admonished Timothy, stir up that gift. Mm-hmm. Stir up that gift. Stirring up our gift implies that our gift is, you know, is, may have been lying dormant, especially for those who have been saved for a long time. That's what it might mean. Situation in life may have diminished the zeal, you know, or effectiveness and so on. And so Paul is admonishing you and me, stir it up. Stir up that gift. Stir it up. Why do we need to stir up these gifts? Why? Consider when, you know, you are making tea, for example, or coffee, you know, when you you have your coffee there, tea, and you put um, sugar. If you don't stir it up, what happens? It might, you know, sink to the bottom. Right. If you don't stir it up, you're not going to get the whole sweetness yeah. that you should get. God bless him. And so you need to stir it up. Amen. And Amen. so that you can, when Amen. you drink it, it becomes, right. you know, every part of that coffee is sweet and you can enjoy it. Amen. This is why it is necessary for us to stir up our gifts mm-hmm. so that we can serve God and fulfill his purpose. And we can save him acceptably. Stirring can also be considered as farming into, farming into flame. It can be considered as keeping a bless, rekindling, waking from sleep, or arousing, and so on. Activating, these are all different you know, words you can use for that. Yeah. And so what would be a better time to do that than now? Right. To go to God in prayer and say, don't, 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 don't we all need to stir up our gifts? Yeah. Yes, even the pastors, even the ministers, even the... Yes. Uh, we all need to stir up that Amen. gift. We want to pray. Find it to flame. You know, reclaim it. Let, let God bring it up so that we can save him more acceptably. And his name is going to be praised. Amen. The Bible says that David encouraged himself in the Lord. Yeah. I want you to encourage yourself. Amen. That's what we want to do precisely. Let's reconsecrate ourselves today. Yeah. You know, let's ask the Lord to... Reveal himself to us, reveal more of what he has for us in our heart, and let us be able to do it. Yeah. And remember that his coming back is imminent. Yes. Amen. We want to do whatever we can do yeah. before the Lord comes. Mm-hmm. Let's come together and pray. And let's um, just seek him afresh, renew our vows before him, reestablish, oh God, those gifts, and find it up into flame. And God will use you and God will bless you.